Prince of Outer Space. I'm from the darkest, darkest depths of space, through the black hole to the white hole, through time and space, through the quantum realm, and through the other all weird, strange dimensions. I present to you my companion on episode 35 of the Solo One podcast, Lord Michael Ball of the planet Ball. Ball? Isn't Ball the bad guy in Stargate? <laughs> Or is that Ball? No, no, that's Ball. Oh, sorry, that's Ball. Lord, Lord, Lord Ball then, Michael Lord Ball. Lord Ball. Well, maybe I'm a gold and I'm sort of like, uh, got the glowing ooh, eyes. Ooh, ooh. Uh, gold. Uh, do you say gold or do you say go at old? Uh, I, I, I call them golds, but apparently it's gold gal. Well, I think what it is, because I'm a big fan. I've actually been watching some Stargate. I watched um, Stargate Continuum yesterday. I thought it was bloody good. I love Stargate. I'm a huge Stargate fan. Um, the what it is they are the Goa old, but the uh, US uh, Air Force have sort of slightly nicknamed it as Golds. Although sometimes you do say here the old the odd Goa old say Gold. So I don't know. It's very confusing. But it's um, it's an epic series, and um, we've already reviewed it. We'll have to review Continuum. Did you, did you like the TV movies from those two? Um, I love the TV. Did you think they were good? They were really pretty epic, weren't they? I mean, for a TV, uh, as I say, TV movie, I mean, you could have gone to the cinema and watched those. Um, which did you prefer? Did you prefer The Ark of Truth or Continuum? Just out? Sorry, we are going on uh, tangent. Uh, the Ark of Truth. Oh, did you? I quite... I, yeah. I, I mean, The Ark of Truth was a good wrap-up, but I like Continuum as being a standalone story. Um, but uh, I like them both, quite frankly. Um, but like, it's like... Um, when you watch it, if you want to delve into Stargate, then sometimes I go into uh, Continuum because it's more standalone. Whereas, of course, the Ark of Truth is the is the wrap up of the entire series. But excellent stuff. Um, so um, I will quickly say that we, this is the second time we've hit recording. We hit record once, and then unfortunately um, it didn't uh, press play on my my recording on my laptop. So we uh, this is our second take, shall we say? So um, I was saying beforehand how um, we were talking about our respective weeks. And I was attacked by a dog this morning in the park, so I wasn't too impressed about that. Was and it a chihuahua? I don't. It was some little yappy thing. I'm not a dog. I'm not a dog person. It was a small yappy thing, um, I but think I didn't that, like that. I think you're being horrible at something. Am I? Why am I being horrible? Yeah, because dogs have rights. They, they have the right to bark and cock their legs up and play against lamp posts. It's what they do. Yeah, but they might cock their leg up against my my leg. They yeah, but take... that, dog, that little dog to you, you'll have been like, like some out of land of the giants, you know what I mean? But why is it? Along the street, you know? All right, but if it's land of the giants, <laughs> I'm not running up to the giant and wanting to bark at it and piss on him. <laughs> I, I, I saw a clip a couple of weeks ago, I shouldn't be laughing. Go on. They had a spot, it was all CGI, but somebody kicked the little dog over a rugby post. <laughs> playing rugby with it and it was a chihuahua and the boot oh, it on the rug. you have Not to send funny, me that man. no I, 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 I tell you find it. you have to send I, I it to me came up and, and Facebook covered it you know with that oh, photograph thing yeah 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 okay. so I had to look and, and I had to admit I started laughing I, 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 well of course it wasn't really it was no, CGI no 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 of course if it was real but uh, and, the thing and, is then it showed the chihuahua's face as it was flying off did you, did you ever foot. see um, a fish called Wanda where that, that woman with the little yappy dogs each one of the yappy dogs ends up dead I think one gets run over by um, a, a car, and another one gets a, like a piano landing on it or something. Did you ever see a fish called Wonder? Yes, years ago. Yeah, yeah. it was just funny the little old lady with the yeah, dog. Yeah, do you remember the Griswold family national vacation? I just saw. Oh, this Christmas. last week I saw the original National Lampoon's Vacation. I've not seen it for well, years. Have you, I loved have you it. seen it? Where the where the fuck the dog was in the car? Park, <laughs> his leg, uh, when they got to California, they were just. <laughs> oh, no, it was dragged in the back. It was dragged at the back of the little old granny. Yeah, was like, Look at this. It was spot there, wasn't it? And, and you, you, had the, you had the old granny. I know you, you had know, the granny I mean. in there, and she had the squint and everything. And then she sort of like she uh, she ends up dead, and she ends up being sitting on the chair on top of the car being driven to. So, uh, yeah, I know. Oh, I love I love National Lampoon's Vacation. I thought it was so fun of those films. Um, and they did. A, they actually recently did a sequel with the Griswolds' kids. 
Um, so, oh, no. It uh, really was all right, um, but you can't beat... I mean, you've got that Chevy Chase. You can't beat the original. Yeah, I love that. And, and the European <laughs> Vacation was good as well. I, I like them all, but I think the original, the Vacation, the first one's the best. But uh, we are not cruel to animals. No, 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 no. I just don't like being uh, sort of uh, confronted by something and then getting a very defensive owner when I to say, what the, yes. what the F are you doing when I'm just reminding me? And I shouldn't have. I, I did lose it a bit with her, quite frankly. But they, they, I, I just, I just like, just leave me alone. You know, just, just control your animals. If you've got to... Oh, I don't know. It's just me. It's just like, um, like I said, I don't like um, things like that when I'm minding my own business, but that's just me. So um, you said that you, um, you've, you've been doing your, your house up and your, obviously your carpets are down now. And what else? Yeah. I, I saw you got um, a, what they called Iron Man models or something. Yeah, I got it, yeah. yeah How's that? Got- yeah. Are you pleased with it? Oh, I love it, yeah. It's beautiful. So what does it do? Is it, is it just a standalone oh, model? Don't ask that question. Everybody should. I get two questions off my friends. Oh, well, I just asked well, you. Well, no, I do it all the time. I've got one that said something over there. Where are you going to put it and what does it do? <laughs> all the bloody time. So what am I supposed to ask? It is a, okay, whatever. Well, it, well, it, well, well, you look at it, don't you? Yeah, 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 and yeah. yeah. I, it lights up, it lights up. Does it talk? No. It doesn't. Oh, it lights up. Okay. Well, you had that thing last week, that um, other oh, superhero that thing. That, yeah, that, that was, was that was quite good. quite clever. Um, but like I said, <laughs> um, we heard from Trek Fan 68 this week, and he said uh, he couldn't... I, I'll give you out his full name without his permission, but he is... No, um, you, no he doesn't mind. He's, uh, he said he'd like to come on at some point. Oh, did he? Oh, OK. Well, <laughs> he's in Florida. I think he's in Florida, I think he said. Yeah, well, that's, I said, well, you work out of time, and I said, we'll sort some out. Yeah, well, to be honest with you, I wouldn't mind having... Seeing as now we're in our 35th episode with the two of us, it would certainly be nice to bounce off some other people, and we could yes. just do a, a group thing on Skype or something. So, um... Yeah, but I can't remember his name is. So sorry, mate. I can't remember his offhand. Trek fan sixty eight. Yeah, but what's his actual name? That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I've he's, on, he's on. He's on Facebook. Understand. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't think he wants his name. So at the moment, um, this is a shout out to Trek fan sixty eight. Um, maybe at some <laughs> point, um, of, of course. I mean, we're recording this at eleven a.m. UK time, which would probably be about four o'clock in the morning in the states. Yes. So we might have to do a recording at. Um, we used to do evening recordings. So, so maybe at some point, if if you'd like to come uh, on. Yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah, it's when we get back to the evening. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it. eventually we are. I mean, like I said, I'm still uh, still at home. So um, yes. Although, of course, they're saying that the uh, that the there's a new spike coming from Europe and uh, oh. I mean, uh, so um, uh, let's not go there. Let's let's, let's keep this no, uh, COVID free. I, I went to the pub on Saturday. Another marvelous time when I went in the pub. What's it like? Uh, hey, well, they were a bit snaky actually because uh, I went to, it's got this nice pub, it's like an hotel at the top of my street. And I met a couple of friends in there after they'd come around and done loads of DIY. <coughs> and uh, somebody, I had somebody for the weekend and uh, we went to the pub, the, the Scandas with this like gun thing. <laughs> Scandy with a gun, okay. Yeah, well, well it tested your temperature and then. Uh, Oh, they put, you weren't allowed to go to the bar, so they had terrible service, so you, they wouldn't take cash, so I was using the card. And uh, I didn't realise after about four or six, I thought, the drinks are more expensive. Mm. Oh, I well, thought, that's going to happen. They're going to try and make up for their loss in... Um... Yeah, but this was after they'd had a big post in the window saying, you know, please support us, we're part of the community. Then what I'd noticed was that I'd spent £10 in table charges. Table charges. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, were joking because they were bringing drinks to table. Oh. We're charging one pound fifty-eight a time. Yeah. And then they had a poster in the window saying, "Please help us." I just thought that was. I'm not going in there again. I'm not. I think that was. That was like ten quid, basically, over four drinks which you had delivered. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, the thing is, though. But then it's it's just so nice. I mean, I've not done it yet. I'm not. I'm not comfortable enough to do that yet. Um, no, they, I mean, they, it was it was a lot of space in there. And it was all right, you know. But it's uh, <laughs> I'm just a bit annoyed about when they when they're asking you to, uh, you know, help the community. And well, then, uh, yeah, I, I, I could see why some people think, you know, fuck that basically. So I can understand how you feel about that because in the end, you're um, using their facilities for them to to make money. But yeah, it's yeah. A, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Well, um, it's not and it's wrong. Yeah, it is. It is wrong. Um, but what do you think will happen? Do you think that's just going to be a long-term thing or a short-term thing while this is going on, or what? <laughs> I don't know. I think we're living in a new world now. 
a whole new world. It, it's it's funny actually. Um, there's a YouTuber I follow called Al Smith. He's not that well known, but he's 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 a nice guy, and he's based in the states in New York. Um, and he's a big Ghostbusters fan, and I've just followed him for years. And he's talk he's been sort of talking about how are things over there. And I was I was um, saying how um, to him how it, when you look when this is done and you'll look back at this. It would be fine, like, oh, that was awful. But what's so awful about it is that it's ongoing. It's not done. It's not past it. And that's the issue. It's the uncertainty factor. Whereas you look back at the, you know, histor hist uh, historical events and stuff like that, it's a lot different looking back at it than it is when it's ongoing. You know what I mean? That's the thing. Yeah. Um, it was actually Robert's... I won't... I don't, uh, Robert is the Trek 68 <laughs> fan. I won't give his surname without his permission, but Robert, um, thanks for... Um, he's been um, sort of sending me some stuff this week. Um, yeah, I didn't know he might be interested in coming on the show at some point, but I would certainly like to have um, um, <coughs> other people. Uh, they want to come on? I don't know. I thought you. I thought you said he wanted to. Oh, is that his name, Robert? Yeah, his name's Robert. Yeah. How do you know that? Because uh, he friended me on uh, Facebook this week. I think that's him. I'm oh, sure that. Yeah, I'm sure that's him. Yeah, I think. Oh God, he is on my Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He is on my first. Oh, sorry, Trek fan. I'm oh, sorry. There's a guy he's never going to contact us again, David. is he? He's never. That's there's it. A guy, there's, a, there's a guy called David, and um, no, he's he's on my Facebook, uh, but he's somewhere else on uh, YouTube. I keep I keep mistaking them. Oh, so was it David the one I wanted to come on the podcast? No, no, yeah, no, David. 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 I'm, I'm confused. I'm confused. There's David and Robert. If one of you fancy coming on the show at some point in the future, let us know. Um, it sounds like it would be a fun show, even just discussing it before you come on. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Trek Fan 68. Sorry about that, mate. Um, yeah, come on at some point. We'd love to, to hear from you and get, get the American perspective of the world in science fiction and anything else. So that'd be cool. Right. Um, shall we go on to the news? Uh, yeah, I'm just loading up names oh, now. Oh, cool. That's brilliant. Well, um, let's hit the <coughs> jingle. Record. That's what's cool. Despite recording disasters, but I won't mind about it. Oh, oh no. I, I, come on. 35, <laughs> 35 shows. It's the first time I didn't hit record and didn't work. That's not bad going, actually. I know. It's, it's not been like pretty been, good. Pretty good. You've been forgiven. Oh, thank you. I, 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 can I sleep tonight? All right. I'll be all right. I won't be able to have nightmares of, of your wrath or anything like that. Or wrath. Uh, yeah. Okay. Wrath. Wrath. Oh, God, that... Is that what is it, Ralph? Uh, uh, no, it's uh, uh, no, hang on. When you watch, you will feel my wrath. When you watch Star Trek, the, the when they say it's Star Trek, the wrath can. It's wrath, yeah. but we say wrath. I think. I think we like. They say like we say like path, and they say path. I can never do an American accent. My friends on the old podcast used to really joke about me getting very nasal when I try and do an American accent, and they say, "Why do you get nasal?" So I don't know. But whatever it is, what, what on earth are we talking about today? This is the most random start to any show we've ever had. Right. Have, have you watched any Marvel movies No, yet? no. Because I'm, I'm defending I your... Got told off, I got told off about that. I've seen, I've just seen the Iron Man ones. A Trek fan, he said he's He told me off. I know. Movie. I know he did. I was going to say, well, he's an MV, but I didn't. Hashtag Marvel version. <laughs> I, I, I didn't. I didn't. I said, well, he's a bit of an MV, but I didn't say I didn't want to do that. MV? Is that, is that something you just made up, or is that something I'm not I aware of? Marvel version. Yeah, I know. Really? I was going to say, it sounds like... You're an MV. That sounds gross, doesn't it? I don't want to get arrested. No, it does happen. It yeah. does happen. I know. What's it like going to prison? What is he's the MV, you mate? Please start watching them, please. <gasps> I, I know. I, I will try. I, really I, 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 I'm going to watch the. What's it? Uh, not the the. Um, what's the one? The Avenger thing. You've, you've got to watch them in order. Oh uh, yeah, that's about two hundred fifty, isn't there? That's a thousand. You'll be oh all right. God! How long am I going to do that? So yeah, hang on. What's the I'm one? Sure. Is it, yeah, uh, just just Avengers. watch all four Avengers movies. It's best. All right, all right, I'll do that. Um, and, and then you come and and, uh, and Guardians of the Galaxy. That's it. Oh, I've seen that. No, I saw the first Guardians of the Galaxy. Well, isn't it the guy in the eighties or something? And he goes, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I saw that years the ago. One, yeah, I thought that. Five, and it had Zoe, what's her face, who played Uhura in the new Star Trek? Yes, Susan. yes. And has they got Karen? Is it what's the one with Karen Gillian from Doctor Who, where she's blue or something? Yeah, that's Gad Nebula's Gaddis. So that. she's in that as well, yeah. So I saw that a yeah. while ago. In both of them. Ah, yeah. see, so I'm not such a virgin after all. All right, well, yeah. Just, we'll, what we'll do is we'll write up the words, <laughs> and then each week a bit of that MV disappears. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, yeah, like a hashtag Mar Marvel Virgin. Like, so next week we can get rid of the N at the end. So I'll be hashtag Marvel yes, Virgin. Yes. 
Yes, then hashtag my, so one letter gets rid of the hashtag per week until I eventually lose the hashtag, and then I yes. and then I've then I've lost my marble cherry. Yes. All right. Well, okay. Well, uh, we'll look forward to that. We'll. Uh, and then you've got to start another DC move, is oh, oh, All right. <laughs> well, it, it, we, the, the thing is, you know, you put up with a lot of my stuff, so uh, and you. I mean, we've got ah, okay. Then we've got to do a show soon uh, for the Incredible Hulk. Then we've got to do a Bill Bixby Incredible oh, Hulk. God. Got to do that, and we've got to do a proper Manimal one, not just the. Um, and we've got to do um, Auto Man as well. Yeah, I've got to do all that. We've well. done them. No, we've not done a, a show focusing on them completely. We've only done that. Oh, no. Yeah, it's true. No, I've got to do the graphics with you it. You really want to focus on that? Yeah, and I've got to have you standing next to Auto Man. Oh, you know no, me no, and my no, Photoshop yeah. skills. I'm impressed you with that. I've, I spent about three hours doing the mist the other day. It took me bloody ages to do. So, yeah. That's right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> right. I hate it. Right. I know, but it made for some interesting discussions. <laughs> right, okay. okay. News, here we go. Here's the jingle. Working. So the sci-fi news. Right, my bit of news, which is actually well known, and actually about going back to Trek 68, he, he had, no, let me know about this. Um, actually, he let me know before I saw your thing. Star Trek Discovery Season 3 has finally got an air date. I think it's something like the 15th of October, um, where Season 3 will yes, finally be shown. Apparently, it's going to be shown straight after <coughs> the animated series Lower Decks finishes. Um, and someone, somebody says that we've got like 23 uh, weeks of brand new Trek. Which is quite good, actually. This is pretty good. Um, I'm not that excited about Lower Decks, but I certainly will check it out. And I think we'll, we'll have to discuss about that because, you know, it does at least look like it fits within canon. Um, so what do you think? Um, do you think that the actual production of Discovery Season 3, because they filmed it before the the virus hit, but of course they've had to do a ton of post-production afterwards. <coughs> do you think it might affect the way it comes across? Like they'll have more time to do more like exterior ship shots and things like that or do you think it will it will be negligible into what it actually the end result will be I, I think it's going to find its identity this season I hope I hope we get a lot more think, ship exterior shots there's one thing I love in I Star think, Trek well, I think they will probably will do you know what I mean I mean we did get some in season 2 a lot more but in the first season you hardly ever saw the discovery at all and it's like I love with all the other Star Trek we always get the usual orbiting around the planet shots which they all did and just seeing the bloody ship because that's one it's thing a beautiful ship. it is actually it has grown on me it's, it's, it's an odd ship. design and it's, it's bronze I liked it when I first saw it well I, I saw it. I saw when they had the first trailer it was it was it was different it didn't have the holes in the saucer and the nacelles were shorter and they, but they changed it to the, the, the final product and it, I, I don't mind it actually it's different but it definitely looks like a Federation starship yeah, um, it's, just, uh, it's just another class. Yeah, so um, I, I hope... We, oh, please, let's have lots of exterior shots and stuff like that. Um, so that's the Star Trek news. What news have you got, your end? <coughs> I've got some sad news, actually. Oh, OK, what's that? Uh, the actor John Saxon passed away. John Saxon? Who's he, what has he been in? I don't recognise the name. John Saxon. John, John Saxon is like... Uh, he, he, he was uh, Sador in Battle... Uh, battle of Battle of Battle of Battle of what they call it? Battle of the Planets. Film. <laughs> no, Battlefield Battle Earth. Battle, he, no, no, he was in that film with John Boy where he were in, you know. Battlestar Galactica. No, it was, well, he was, <laughs> uh, no, Roger Corman was behind it. Oh, God. Battle for the Stars or something. Battle Beyond the Stars. No, yeah, well, John Saxon, he played Sador. Oh, I don't remember that. And and, and, he, and he's lots, he was in uh, Enter the Dragon. And I know, seen he's, that. He was in Six Million Dollar Man. He's been on everything Science Fiction. He's got a bit of a cold following. Okay. John Saxon, yeah. John Saxon. Just, well, just Google him. I'm now. doing it now, as you're saying. I'm actually doing that exactly what you're Battle suggesting. Battle Beyond the Stars. Battle Beyond the Stars. You've seen Battle Beyond the Stars. I saw it. Do you, do you know what? We're going to be doing uh, The Last Starfighter next week. And I was convinced that The Last Starfighter was Battle Beyond the Stars. Because the ship in Battle Beyond the Stars looks like it's got breasts. It's an orange ship, and you look at the bottom of the front of it, it looks like it's got breasts and nipples. Have no, you ever no, seen it? it? It's not, no, the, the, the ship in, uh, in, in uh, Battle Beyond the looks like a pair of bollocks without a penis. Yeah, well, I, I thought it was more female, you're obviously thinking, but it does, it looks like, it looks like anatomy. Um, yeah, well, and, uh, it looks like anatomy, yeah, yeah I agree. You know what I mean? It, it's a terrible ship, and now that, 
Do you know how I went to the cinema to see that, you know? But it does have a cool music to it, so... Oh, John Saxon, now I recognise what you... Yeah, I know him. Was he in The Black Hole or something like that? You look, I, I do know him now. No, I don't think so. Yeah, there's another so. guy who looks like him who's in The Black Hole. I think he died a couple of years ago. Yeah. He, was on, he was on The Black I watched Bear. that recently. Uh, yeah, I like that. I like that. I mean, that's another one we're going to do a review it's, it's of. It's a weird film. Have we covered that yet? No, we haven't done that. No. That's the well, first step in one. We're going to put in the bank for that one. Uh, it's got a great um, um, theme tune, though. I think it oh, was... Oh, God, it's um, scary. Is it John Barry? Didn't John Barry do the music for that? I think John Barry did it. I, I like the opening Music is so one. cool. The music's awesome. Um, the opening credits are awesome. Yeah, it's it's a it's, and it's I think it's uh, I don't know it's May is but early eighties but it's it looks good. It's it stands up well in for its uh, special effects. I think it's yeah. So I yes. definitely want to do that one. Uh, yeah. So John Saxon. Yeah, I, I am aware of him. I, I think he's one of those guys that he just happens to be that most of the stuff that he's done I've just not seen. But uh, yeah, I am familiar with his face, so it was quite sorry to hear about him. What else? What other news have you got? Uh, the next three Star Wars movies get new release dates. First one comes in 2023. Yeah, I heard it's postponed. Um, but of course, have they postponed it since? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I think I think it was going to be 2022. It might have been that. It was, I mean, it's, I don't know. I don't know what, but I know that it's been delayed. Uh, they're not saying much about it, but I, I read an article this week that they're going to want to do the last three films. Oh, they're not going to go back into the films and change them, are they? How can they do that? I, I think, I don't know. Oh, that, what, that would be that would be oh. a bad idea. But that, could, but, but that could be fake news. I mean, oh, back out. I can't see them doing that. How can they do that? That would completely screw up. The, I mean, they did that recently with the Terminator film. Well, it could be set in an alternative reality. Oh. That's the excuse to use now, isn't it? The last I heard, it was <laughs> going to be a completely different time period. And it wasn't going to be too... It would I be heard a, it was the Old Republic. Yeah, I heard that. Well, it's going to be like a prequel. Not a prequel in... It's just going to be a different time setting. So although it'll have the the basic laws of Star Wars, it, it won't be affiliated with the Skywalker saga, uh, which I hope personally. Um, I've got some news about Picard season two. Oh, please, go for it. Uh, it was on uh, Mr. Hate's reviews. Uh, you should check him out. He's really good. He's English and uh, <coughs> Mr. Hate's reviews. Okay. I, he had a live question. I did mention that we've done Predator versus uh, East Enders. <laughs> he couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> And, well, uh, all on YouTube, did, that's a great he, thing. He did mention it on his live stream, which he thought he found funny. Oh, uh, Apparently, uh, Picard, uh, uh, Star Trek Picard Season 2, will be to deal with social issues. Uh, apparently, when he goes back to Earth, he, there will be a lot of prejudice against him because he's a synthetic, and he has oh. to deal with that. Well, that's, yeah. that sounds... I don't think it's a strong enough basis for an entire season. It'd certainly be interesting to yeah, look well, at. Well, it's him. going to be one of the themes in the season. Mm. Because he's now a synthetic. And the question is, is he the is he Picard or just a copy? Yeah. I mean because he's not even a clone, is he? He's it's artificial. Yeah. So um Yeah, it might be alright, but I, I I'd rather I don't know. I don't know. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I'm not too happy about it. Yeah, honest. I'm not too sure either. I was hoping you'd say that. Uh, yeah, Picard to me was the man that walked into a bar that said no aliens and he threw the sign on the floor. Yeah. And stood his ground and that's the Captain Picard I understand. And they're going to take that moment, which was a beautiful moment in the series. And try and destroy it. Do you think in some ways it's a bad idea for them to actually continue after the way the resolution at the end of season one? I mean, they're obviously making a season two, but it sounds like it's it's going to obviously follow on from season one. But well, he's, he's, what do you he's think? Signed up for three seasons. He's yeah, signed up for three but he's seasons, I mean yeah. he's pushing. I mean he's eighteen now for crying out loud. I think he's getting on a bit, isn't he? Especially with all that's going on. Um, I, I I I'm a bit underwhelmed by that. I was hoping that maybe he would uh, have a new sense of life based on his um, his change and maybe he'd start to get back into Starfleet and do something actually get a ship well that's what I want that's what that's we all what want I really want we want, I mean, yeah. get the car yeah, on I a Starship I don't care about all this I I d- yeah honestly. yeah I mean I, I like I want I, his character's interesting enough but what's happened's happened and yes feature I mean it's, it's certainly feature in season 2 but if that's the the, the prominent factor um, I don't think I'll be that interested, quite frankly. I don't think that'd be enough for me. Yeah, well, we'll have to wait and see. Again, uh, it could be rumours. Uh, they might change it. I mean, you yes, don't know yet. They're not yes. even started actually production yet because it got on well, hold. Well, he said it in some interview, apparently. 
Well, is he still executive um, producer? Uh, yes, he is. So yes. the thing is, though, I don't know. Um, I mean, I, I actually watched the, last, the first two episodes of Picard again yesterday. I've never seen it. I'm going to go through the series again. Um, yeah, I'm going to through it. And it's so far, it's. I think it's definitely better on the second watch um, so far. Um, you're a bit more used to even the F bombs and and yes. um, the 24th century people not being how they were portrayed. <laughs> They're less evolved, but yeah, but yeah, I mean, I mean, the thing is, there is an explanation for that. It, it's, it's the war, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. The people are different. They never explained that, 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 That's the good that, idea. I mean, that, that's exactly right, and that's a very, very valid they, point. Uh, because uh, the next gen was the golden era of Starfleet. It was about exploration, on it? Yes. And, then, and they were a bit of their own ass at the time, you know. And then, and then, obviously, the big boys on the block decided they wanted to play. Yeah. And they, and, and well, they've had to become more militaristic. Well, you've got to. They've got a lot to defend, don't they? So. And the, I get and the, why and they're the, like, yeah, but yeah. There is that message of hope in there, which I hope they keep. Yeah, and I think there's a good point that the populace, because they had. They had the Borg scare, which didn't happen, but there was a big scare. Then they had the actual Dominion War, and then so uh, people do change. So it's like after war times and stuff. People see, do. You see, I wanted to pick. I wanted to pick up on that. I'd like to know what happens. Oh well, yeah. I mean, uh, I really, and the Rom. I really wanted to pick up like the. 20 well, the Romulans. Years on I mean, the Romulans. The devastation. Yeah, I mean, the Romulans are certainly well covered, but we don't know about the Cardassians. We don't know about the uh, the Klingons. We don't know. I mean, did the Dominion just go back into the wormhole? Because the wormhole. As far as you know, it's still linked to the Gamma Quadrant. Yeah. Um, you know, where's well, where yeah, and what's back? Deep Space Nine? What's happening there? Is he evolved there? into a godlike being? Or... Oh, uh, <coughs> There's a lot to answer. There's so many but questions with Deep Space Nine which haven't been answered, and they should have been. They should have been answered. There's going to be extras for what you leave behind. There's, they're putting all the cutoffs together. Into oh, another version. oh, that's yeah. good. So there was more on. Yeah. I mean, the the what you leave behind documentary. If you're yeah. not aware, it was, yeah. it was based in the space. Yeah, there's going to be something with it all. It's to do with uh, you know when they put the episodes together. Right. So they've got uh, extra it, stuff it's that they use. It's a the 15 hours of footage. They're going to edit it down and that. Oh wow! And put it in some when they created that story. But they, it was on about. Uh, was it Ira, Ira, what is it? it was Ira Stephen Bear. One of them interviews this week. Okay. On, on them panels, and he said, he was on about the word as a bit of fun that they were going to get the writers together at least where they were going to sort of create episodes for season eight as a joke, you know, messing about and that. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, excellent. which I found interesting. Yeah, yeah well, so, um, I was Ira Stephen Bear was a really good, obviously, writer. Uh, didn't yeah. they? Didn't they? Were they planning on doing something similar with Voyager as well? Because it's their twenty fifth anniversary. Uh, um, that's in the works now. It's what? I think that that's in the works now. Oh, brilliant! That'd be good. I hope that happens because yeah. um, I'm a big fan of Voyager as well. I, I like all the Star Treks, and even Discovery's grown on me a bit. But uh, like I said, if Picard, please, just please, if you listen to this. Give him a starship, a Federation starship next yes. year. It doesn't have to be a massive. It could be like a Grissom's science vessel or a birth call. Just give him a little ship, even if it's just, you know, and just let him have a very small Starfleet crew, um, some special factor or something. And let, let, let's see him back in uniform, please. Don't get rid of that. You know, give him a larder. Oh, anything. But as long as he's got a Federation. A larder, you know, a larder car with two nacelles on it. USS Larder. Yeah, you know larders. Remember larders? Of course, I know larders. They're idiots. I hate larders. USS Larder, NCC seven six three two. Yeah, they look like a larder. Yeah. Okay. They're all squashed. Or even give him there. a runabout. Give him a future. Give him a suit up runabout. But just give him. Yeah. Get rid of that horrible and the, thing. And that downloaded data into the Alexa. And also get rid of those holographic um, panels, please. Well, they're, they're putting their hands in their own, they're waving their hands like they're, they've, got, they've like got itchy fingers or something. Give them proper... Yeah. I hate those uh, three um, those holographic things. Give them panels. Give them something that they're actually physically touching because it doesn't look right. It just doesn't suit it. Yeah. It works all right on the Expanse because they have that Expanse, but not in Star Trek. It doesn't work for me. Anyway, there you go. Um, that's, so that's a bit of Star Trek news. Um, talk Star Wars. Anything else? Uh, Zack Snyder debuts first Justice League director's cut of Superman in the black costume. Oh, he's in the black costume? Yes. Okay. In the black costume, yeah. Uh, is that... I'll save the clip, it's online, it's only a couple of seconds. So why is he in a black costume on this red? Because, and... oh, for God's sake. I don't know! This is my... Right, this is well, well, he died, he died in... 
Batman vs. Superman and, 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 and they brought him back and oh, mate. he'd come back in a black suit. Oh. And, you know, I remember, and everybody wanted to see him in the black suit. Oh, and, I remember, the, I, I'm going to press you here. What about, I saw a Spider-Man film I think, and there was something where there was a Spider-Man in a black suit. Spider-Man 3 or something. Yes, yes. See, that's impressive. I knew that. He was in a black well, all suit. Right, just right, just watch the four Avengers movies <laughs> and watch, watch Justice League, and then you'll. Right. It sounds like it sounds like the Palace of Justice Righteous or something from Kenny Everett. I think there's something like that. Was it Palace of Justice? I'm not going there. I'm not. I'm not entertaining it. I'm just. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I will... I, OK, all right, I'll watch the Avengers and uh, I'll impress you with my right. knowledge. Right, cool. Because they're all going to say, why is it, why is it, not, yeah, why is it they're not seeing any Marvel or DC movies? I just... I don't know. I've just never got we're into gonna, them. We're gonna, that's going to be homework. I know, I know. And you... Yeah, OK. Well, I will. I will... I will um, OK, I'll watch the Avengers and then um, um, tell you what I think of it. And I have some... Uh, well, I've got some alien news. Oh, yeah. Oh, hang on! I heard something about this. Any yeah. news? Oh, 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 you, yes. you, you said that last week or something that there, there were somebody's taking over the Alien franchise and they're going to mix it up with somebody. No, 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 not not that. Oh. All about like real like. Oh, space real alien! Thing. I think you meant the Alien. Them that morph. stick probes up your ass and all that. Them types. Oh, okay. What are they doing to you now? They only what they're doing now. <laughs> 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 uh, they found a lucky human. It's the first photo of planets orbiting a sun 300 light years away. Oh, okay. <coughs> the planetary system TYC 8998-760-1, sitting 300 light years from us, shows a pair of, pair of massive worlds orbiting a star much like our own sun. Okay. The team of astronomers took a pair of images system showing the movements of the planet around the star. Wow, okay. How, how do they get these pictures? I mean, this is what I don't understand. How do they get the... I mean, because they, uh, they used it, to... It's something to do with the light waves. That if there's a shimmer, it's like a bit yeah, of light. they can if tell by like, light or... or like gravity. a little... Sh it's like a line, but if it's a distortion in line. And they can work they out can... from the distortion, from the, the distance yeah. and the size. It's very clever, isn't it? Did you it see? Did you see and then that? They scan um, all the frequencies and they create the images. Then yeah, it's it's certainly interesting. Did you see that yeah. that square cube thing that that somebody took a picture? That's of? where I'm going now. I'm just going to that now. Oh, really. okay. Because that was a paper I despised, but I won't mention that. <laughs> okay, another one. But it's uh, and, and it's been on other things. UFO sighting, alien cube ship ten times bigger than Earth captured by NASA. Yes, I heard that. Now I, I put it on Facebook because someone said apparently it was actually a glitch in the in the ph photography. It wasn't real apparently, but it looks it looks pretty real to me. Um, it's the bulk. It's it it the looked bulk. like a bulk cube. It did look, but apparently it'd be like the size like it's like they think it's if it was real it'd be more like a Dyson sphere or something. But then it, it wouldn't be because it's smaller than the sun, so it couldn't be a Dyson sphere. But what do you think about that? Do you think yeah, but every time there's a weird image, there's always a glitch? Yeah, yeah. I want to actually. I want no, to I'm do... open to it. I'm open, but some at ten times the size of the Earth. I think a lot of people would have spotted that, really. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I've got the image up in here. It's um, yeah, it's, it, it is creepy. It's a bog cube. It does it? look like a bog cube. It does. It looks really quite creepy. I'm just going to some of the comments. What else do they say? Um... <laughs> Some reason the comments. Uh, the UFO database in the image added light focus, and we can see that the red material. Right, somebody it says gathering around its hull, a force field. Somebody says the black square is due to a missing, corrupted telemetry block. So whatever that is, oh, I don't. But then people are always going. Gonna... I could explain what that is, but I'm what because I really I don't know what it is. I don't know what that is. That just sounds like gobbledygook to me. Oh, it said aliens. Yeah, yeah, it's an alien. Yeah, it's a Borg. Yeah, it's, the Borg yeah. of a ride. Okay, we're going to yeah, be assimilated. The They've looked at us and they think we're not assimilating. Well, them. No, they're going to wait until the coronavirus is it's done. Then they'll, they'll assimilate us next year. Next year. Well, when the vac if the vaccine comes out next year. Oh, oh yeah, the vaccines. And the and the found they've got the buying some vaccine to inject us all with. Well, yeah, but then a lot of people say, I don't want to have a vaccine. I want to, I want to get it. I don't, I don't see why I should have a vaccine. So, oh, I don't understand people. I tell you, if they're finally find this thing, 
get the vaccine, get it done, move on. I know. Why are people so odd? Why are people so unpredictable? I know. It's well, I, yeah, well, there is the anti-vaxxers there not having it because it's the government putting the mind chips into your head. So they can take over our minds and turn us all into They're the slow. ones that watch too much science fiction, yeah. And oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, anything else for me? No, I think that's the news covered for this week. I think that's it. It's been quite interesting, yes. Yeah, certainly some interesting things. And um, yeah. I did think about you this week because I know that they're saying that they are releasing more and more um, foot, uh, information about UFOs and stuff like that from government sources. So it's funny how they seem to be opening up more and more to it now. Um, whether that's a prelude to some big news coming in the future. Do you think that, or do you think it's coincidence, or what? Well, the, the, the old story is the bombarding is with science fiction to prepare us for the big day. Yeah. Do you think that will happen? Well, I'd like to see it in my lifetime. Yeah. Well, I, I'd say... I don't want them to be bad. I would like them to be quite friendly. Yeah, but I think per- people would be ter- absolutely terrified if it happened. If they suddenly said, um, you know, they released it and, like, there's... Um, ships in Area 51 and stuff, I think people would be absolutely terrified. Well, well, to be honest, I mean, if they wanted to appear, they would appear, wouldn't they? Well, would have thought so. Nobody could do anything about it. Well, unless they have, like, a um, a non-interference, like a Federation drive or something, (coughs) where they can't get in, you know. My my friends were, like, off the motorway. You know when you're driving down these these roads and then you get that country road, but you don't know where it goes? Yes. That's what we are, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, this, but I like the analogy of that. Cause yeah, I can see we that. We are at the end of the Milky Way, so we could be off the main motorway. You oh, know. so we could be like in uh, Bogner or something, or we could be like... Yeah, in, we, uh, we're like one of them. You remember the modern movies where they, where, the, where there's like a bank of fog and they drive the car through and they end up in a village that's like 400 years <laughs> behind <laughs> and they eat here and do strange things. That's what we're probably like for them. Yeah, so we're like a bewildered mist. Yes. Yeah, okay. That, that, I like that. Yeah. A bewildered mist. Yeah, that's it. That's yes. cool. Well, there we are, people. I hope you'll um, uh, agree with that uh, particular analogy from us. Um, I certainly I can see some um, credibility in that particular um, idea. So uh, let's just uh, hope that uh, we continue to uh, not attract the bad guys out there. Right, um, shall we go into our focus of the week? Right then, let's go to the focus of the week. Okay, here we go. It's the Solar Sci-Fi Focus of the Week. Okay, um, this is a classic. Um, We've all seen this. Well, most of us have seen it um, from 1984. Uh, That is, of course, Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's one of his very first big name films where he, he was well known uh, and that was of course The Terminator um, which uh, of course is a classic so um, I will quickly start this one off by saying that I remember seeing it uh, I remember getting it on VHS for my birthday and I don't know why I don't know how I heard about it I think it was quite big um, in the 80s even uh, sort of like soon after it came out and uh, of course it was going to feature the future time travel all sorts of things alternate timelines um and i i I was totally blown away by it um i i I just liked the idea of just an ordinary person working in a as a waitress um not expecting anything much out of her life and then realizing that the her future son uh was going to be uh the leader of the rebellion through, through this terrible thing which happens in 2029 or the early 21st century um and it was really really good it was it still holds up very well today it's very different from some of the other ones um i like the fact that arnold also played the bad guy whereas all the other ones he was reprogrammed as a nice guy for the most part and i i don't know i i I just think that also he had a foreign accent the way and he hardly spoke and of course he was very muscular um, and it, it was all the confusion that uh, continued as you know the, the story went on, and of course you realise what it's all about. I loved it. I think it's. I think it's, it's still very, very strong. It's very, very cult film. What do you think about it? Tell me what you think about it. <coughs> what the Terminator? Yeah. What do you think of the first one? 
I, I thought it was so perfect. I thought it was way beyond its time. It's a very clever idea. The the concept of the idea was taken from the Twilight Zone or the Outer Limits. It was one of them. Oh, was it? It was based on the story from yeah, that? Yeah, no, it was, uh, well, not fully. It was, uh, it was about a soldier from the future. It's one. Of, I think it's Michael Ansara. I think it might be Outer Limits. I've seen that one. Uh, yeah, yes. he's a soldier in an accident that comes back through time. And realizes the devastating war that if he kills somebody in the past, this war will happen. It's something like that, and uh, it, that's that's what sort of happens. And I forgot how it finished. I've not seen it in years. But yeah, Gabe Cameron took it from that. That's basically. interesting. Well, you, I mean, obviously, a lot of um, these sci-fi films are taken from other sci-fi ideas. Yes. Yeah. And of course, the Twilight Zone and the Outer Limits presented so many different ideas that you can see how. No, because I remember the I, I remember Michael Ansara, of course, because he played Kang in uh, Star Trek as yes, well as um, yes. he appeared in DS Nine. So um, I I would need to see that episode again. I could easily Google the episode to find out which episode it was. But yeah, that's interesting that that was actually um, used as a trigger for the idea of the film. Um, yeah, so, well, yeah. so what did you think of the cast in the film how, and the direction of how I, it went? I, I'm I'm big Michael Bay fan. Uh, 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 I thought. I loved the entire film. You were on edge of your seat. Yeah. The Terminator was totally relentless. Absolutely. You couldn't stop it. It, it, it threw everything at it. And even in that fact at the end, it was still... Still t- desperately trying. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it had to do its job, but it was just pure malevolent. And, you know, it had no feelings when it did what it did. No. And, but the story, Terminator 1 is like a science fiction horror chase movie, yes. and it's brilliant. Yes, it is. That's what I liked about you it. Know, and it has, even now, it's, I, I love the, uh, when he has the dream sequences, when he's dreaming, and you see in the future. I just think it, it is, the film's so dystopian. Yep. You know, and I love the ending where she's sat in the car with the dog in the road, They're like, no, thank Yeah. Awesome movie. And Special effects so perfect at the time. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. And the action scenes. I love the scene in the police station. He just goes slots a lot of them. Goes absolutely, I'll mad. be back. Yeah, yeah. goes crazy. That's yeah, it. absolutely. I mean, there are so many good scenes. I mean, the last scene that you mentioned, like at the end, where uh, she's already in Mexico and she has her picture taken, which of course is the inspiration for for Reese's um, falling in love with her in the future. And then um, the Mexican says, um, "He's in the petrol uh, garage," and he says. Uh, I think there's a storm coming, and then she says, "I know," or something, and then she drives off into the sunset. Um, and as you say, there, are, there, are, the, the film literally has just so many good scenes. Also, the music, the, the, the oh, 80s yeah. synthesizer, oh, the, the soundtrack was fantastic yeah. as well. Yeah. And the original, the actual main Terminator theme, which has been used in just about well, all the sequels, is excellent. It, it, it's, it's funny how you, how you say. I always see Terminator One as the final movie in it all. Do you? Yeah, yeah. It, well, it, it, it's like it could be the beginning of the final movie because when he comes through from the future, they destroyed Skynet. Oh, They've done yeah, it. Yeah. Matt, he said we smashed his defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's we it. We finished it, but it sent a Terminator through and I came through after it. That's and, right. You're and, right. And, and like, so really, like, you could really start off with Terminator Salvation and, and put them in some kind of order. Because it's all about getting into that facility and, and and then sending somebody through time. Yeah. But obviously we've had about a million Terminators sent through. Yeah, that. well, that's the problem. But, uh, yeah, that, but if you just went, if it were just that one film with that. Are you glad that, that they made sequels, or do you wish in some ways it had only ever just uh, been the, the first one? The greatest sequels to any film of all time is Terminator 2, which surpasses the first one. And no, Aliens. I, I, and they're, I they're prefer... They're the greatest sequels I've ever made. Yeah, now... I, past original. Now, it's funny, because I actually prefer... Never got it like that, with pref- any other film. I prefer both Alien and Terminator 1 to Aliens. Really? And really? Two. Um, I think it's just because of the way you first saw it. Both those yes. sequels are excellent, and, and they are literally... I mean, to me, they are literally just a, a, a millimetre less, or minuscule, tiny amount... Uh, off the the actual top uh, yeah, number one. Yeah, no, I, I totally, I totally get where you're coming from, and I could but agree with that. I think what it is, it was more for both those films. It was both more the feel, fear factor, the uncertainty factor. And, yes, and but that's was, the, yeah, but that it's like 
it, that's a great way to do it, isn't it? Yeah. The first one is set up with like, like, like Alien and like Terminator. It's one Terminator. Yeah. One, one alien. alien. This it's unstoppable. You can't kill it. You've got no weapons. You're stuck using your wits to survive, getting older what you can. <laughs> Terminator one does that beautifully. Because there's also the police on their case as well. Yeah. You know, societies are. It's not easy. You know. No. And same with Alien on the ship, the Nostromo and all that running about going on. This thing's taking them all out. That's right. But then you get the sequels, which take it up to the next yeah, level. Yeah, they do here. take it up to the And you're right, yeah. but I just for me, um, I, for instance, with Terminator, I liked Arnold as the bad guy. Uh, yeah, I And that's did. the only thing, the only one where he was the bad guy, or technically... Um, you have seen a CGI in Salvation of Arnold, he's a bad guy. You also see now him in Dark Fate as the bad guy. But then one thing which is uh, a, a negative towards any of the sequels, even um, the second one, is that uh, there's a, a line of dialogue which Michael Bean's character says, where he says, um, um, it's just me and him, no one else comes through, no one else, can, and of course they changed it to say that in the Terminator 2, two Terminators were set back in time. So they're already trying to re, re retool it a bit to obviously make the sequel. And then, of course, in Terminator Dark Fate, then there was a third Terminator which went through and killed John Connor. So, you know, sometimes, I, although I love all the Terminator films, to me, I sometimes just think, well, look, I like the others ones, but the first one, when they made it, they didn't know it was going to become a huge hit. They didn't know it was going to make sequels. They didn't plan sequels, I don't think, when they made the first one. It was just a standalone um, sci-fi time travel chase movie um, with this wonderful character of, of well, all of them, Michael Bean, Sarah, uh, Sarah Connor, Linda Hamilton, and, of course, Arnold. Um, and they all worked so well. And to me, it was just the original idea of the standalone film, which to me puts it as because Judgment Day wouldn't be there if they made the first one. Lance Henriksen as well. Yeah, Lance Henriksen, and also and, um, and Peter, Paul, uh, Paul and Paul Winfield um, as well. Is it Paul yeah. Winfield? Yeah, Paul Winfield as well. Yeah, and Bill Paxton. Bill Paxton was the... Uh, uh, he was funny in his little while. <laughs> he was, I think he was the punk. He was the punk, yeah. Yeah. The only guy to be killed by Terminator. Uh, a predator, predator and an alien. I know you, you were going to say that. Yeah, I thought yeah. that as well. It's yeah. classic though, isn't it? I mean, it's a privilege, is that? Isn't uh, it? I mean, I, I, I was really sad to hear about Bill Paxton's dying about two or four years ago, I think it was. I was. Yeah. I don't know what it was, but I was, I was shocked about that because he wasn't that old. Uh, Stop yeah. grinning and drop your lid. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was really good, actually. Um, he was in. Uh, he was in um, t- uh, Titanic as well. As well. Uh, but he never had. Yeah, he's in Titanic. Are, are, you, are you ready to go back to Titanic? He said to the. Um, and he's in oh, Summers. No. Yeah, he was in that as well. He's in lots of films. Uh, but yeah, Terminator had so many um, good actors in small roles as well. And Dr. Silverman as well, the actor, he's been in loads of things as well. Um, Dr. Silverman, the actor, he was in t- also in number two, number three. He appeared in Next Generation as Nagilum. In, uh, this is me on the spot. Season two, where silence has lease. That was the actual. Yes. That was pretty impressive. It, 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 what was interesting about his character, the shrink dude? Yeah. That, and, and, and you get into Terminator 3. I know when he's got the uh, coughing and he says him, he runs off. <laughs> yeah. Which I couldn't stop laughing about. But then again, we get another contradiction, don't we? In Terminator 3, which undoes the other two movies, when he says that Judgment Day. It's going to happen. You just postponed it. Did he? I don't, I, 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 yeah, he says that because he said when he turns up in uh, Terminator Three, he says, "Well, I thought Judgment Day was stopped after Terminator Two. I yeah. thought it was over." He turned around and said, "No, you only postponed it." Did so he? then I you get know. into Doctor Who territory that there's certain things in history you can't stop. Yeah, certain things are fixed. So fixed maybe in, Judgment fixed Day is going to happen anyway, in whatever form. Well, yeah, you can postpone it, but but you can't change it. But in Terminator Two on the Blu-ray mm. and in the paperback, which I've written, there's a different ending. I saw the uh, re-ending of the Terminator Two, where which it, I did uh, that, but they didn't, they didn't go with that. That was just in case they could milk it for more money. Yeah, and in the end, they changed it, and you see, you see, um, Sarah Connor as an old lady with John Connor, and they're oh, oh, they're all, like on a beach, yeah. they're all like on a beach or something. They're all like they're, they're yeah. and it, it Terminator the Judgment Day never happened. Um, 
And the thing is, yeah, I mean, whether they did it for the uncertainty factor in the final film, because they were planning on making another sequel, which is probably what they did. But they, they weren't sure, so they filmed two different endings, and they went with the, the, the more uncertain um, finish. And, of course, then it's yeah. interesting with um, Terminator 2, which we will focus on another episode, where, of course, now, technically, you've had two tangents from Terminator 2, where, one, you have Terminator 3, and then one, where you have Terminator Dark Fate. So it's, it's well, all a bit well, of a muddle, isn't it? Well, I assume that John Connor is like... Because if he's born of a father from the future and a mother of the past, that makes him a paradox or a, a, an anomaly in the time stream. Yeah, exactly. It really shouldn't exist. No, he should have cast himself the, out. And, and like, like, even though Skynet's pure, 100% ruthless and logical, it, it, it's, it's, it, the one thing Sky, one thing computer can't overcome is a paradox. Yeah, but they... It screws its programming up. There's two things about it. You can either have an alternate timeline... Or, um, or, uh, or uh, yeah. where it disappears, you literally blink out of existence. They have that two things inside, two well, ways in sci fi, don't they? But they, uh, there is a, they did try covering this with a different concept, actually, in one of the later films to cover this. But I've always thought John Connor shouldn't exist. He shouldn't exist because his father is of the future. He's the future, so he shouldn't be conceived. Yeah. But maybe the creation of John Connor is like. It's like it affects all timelines. It's the one constant. The, the, the for, for every reaction. There's an opposite, you know, opposite well, reaction. Yeah. So, so Skynet destroys the world, but through doing that, it creates its own own destruction. Um, yeah. So yeah. nature comes in all time, whatever, creates the paradox. Because like Skynet, it, I mean, this is what I've figured out. In uh, Terminator Genesis. Yeah. With Matt Smith. I, I watched a couple of videos on him. He was he was Skynet. He was, but he wasn't Skynet from that reality. He was a Skynet travelling all the different timelines. Oh, multiple multiple timelines. He was the quantum time Skynet, oh. and this is where they were going to go with. Him. I know that because they, they were planning on doing a sequel to Genesis, and it didn't work out. Yeah, well, they, what it, well Matt Smith was uh, a Skynet moving around from timelines to time or reality to reality and what he could not understand was that every timeline he'd been in Skynet had lost to the humans in every single timeline he'd been in <coughs> and so and, and when he turned up there that's why he, he did what he did he sent him he, he like nanite him into a terminal into a term, yeah, and that yeah. was what they were going to do with it but then we get to a dark fate when 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 Legion, that Legion one says to him, uh, or, or no, a, a Genesis, sorry again, says to the other Terminator, came from the original timeline. He said, "Your timeline's gone. It's dead." Yeah. You know, so I mean, this is it. I mean, it's time travel. It, it, it's confusing. It is confusing because you get the TV series then, which is part. I of the wonder canon. whether you were going to mention the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Also, also, yes, I know. It's exactly. an alternative reality. It's another dimension. I think what you've got to do, because there's been so many... Ch I mean, obviously, Genesis, they wanted to do a sequel. They wanted to do a sequel to Salvation. Both of those didn't work out. Um, and Dark Fate. And Dark Fate as well, which I don't think is going to happen either. So I honestly think now... I and mean, we are going to cover each specific Terminator film in future episodes, so we're not going to talk too specifically, but... I will, do, will say that I really think that the Terminator franchise, at least for the foreseeable future, is, is pretty much wrapped up now. I think that's pretty much it. Which is a shame. Um, but I do like the fact that you can just go into it and think about it as a multi-timeline multi, ball, multi -timeline series with different tangents in respect of each film. And you just, you just, just sit back and just let it wash all over you, as, as far as I can the way I see it. But I would say that the, the first Terminator, though, um, I, just, I do like you, what you said about the fact that in many ways it's like the end of the Terminator films in regard to well, it sounds Skynet. Like yeah, I like that. I, I think that's, that I never thought about it, yeah. it quite like that. I think that's... that's and also it's back that's to basics. That's way I'm not saying I'm right. But you could, because when he comes through, they'd smash Skynet and Skynet sent the Terminators out or whatever through yeah. and he was sent after Kyle. Kyle and I, al I also like about the first Terminator, which is one reason I like it the most, is that you see the Terminator of Arnold as the basic default. Not reprogrammed, not Mr. Nice Guy. They were good in those respective sequel films, but I like the fact that his role as the Terminator was the original role of him being made by Skynet. No alterations. Yes. It's the bulk standard T101, T800, 
uh, Terminator, and that was his job, and that's he was going to do everything he could based on his original programming to get the job done. And that's that's to me and, yeah. what makes the film. Yeah, but uh, Joe Bird, yeah, that's what I loved about it. But also with Terminator, so yeah, there's a lot more to a Terminator. And and it would nice. I think it's because once it's completed its mission, what does it do? Uh, well, we find out in Dark Fate, don't we? Well, we do. Well, but, it gets I mean, married it, and becomes Carl. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got to admit, I, look, I think they screwed it up with that. The, I, I mean, they like screwed bit, it up yeah. with storyline, but I've got to admit, I did quite enjoy Dark Fate. I did too. I've seen and it I'll twice now. And I'll probably get yeah, no, no. down. For I've that. seen it twice now. I think it's a, actually a quite strong it's film. Not a bad film. No, it's good. I, I like it a lot. I actually, and I like the alternate. Um, Legion and the Revs instead of the T-800s and the... It's well, it's just, yeah, I like another, it. it's just another reality. But I like the fact that even in another reality, in the end, humanity gets destroyed by artificial intelligence. It, it's something about it. I, I, I've got... I'm, yeah. I can't wait to do another review. We'll, we'll do, like I said, each film. We'll have um, to go into all this time travel stuff. It's it complicated. But I, but I think there's one... I think, and like I said, I think the first time, when it sent the first one through... And I think, I mean, if it were that intelligent, it cancelled itself out of existence. So much for that being. Yeah, so much for that. Did, it wiped itself out. I mean, stupid thing. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah. But I think that when the first Terminator went through with Kyle Reese and, and the creation of John Connor, I think that created multiple timelines. And really, it's uh, really each film is just a different well, variation. Well, think about that, the episode uh, of Star Trek Next Generation Parallels. Yes, yeah, Wolf goes right, through yep, this thing, right, and right. it's literally like a, it's like a, a, a fork and fork and fork, and it's like, um, uh, it's amazing. I mean, that's a, that's another episode which is a really interesting in parallel timelines and alternate realities and the, things like that. And it, it's, there's some parallels between that, uh, uh, i.e., parallels the episode in Star Trek plus the parallels <laughs> in in the Terminator. So, um, I want to sum up this uh, film to say that it is a, certainly a classic. Um, it's certainly one of the best chase sci-fi movies horror movies not so much I mean, it's horror but it's not horror horror it's, it's you know the horror in Terminator it's it's done in a way which I think it's not too over the top I don't know I just think that the whole thing from the direction the storyline the production the acting um, even the fact that it's made 36 years uh, yeah 36 years ago um, it's an excellent series and an excellent uh, beginning of the franchise and wherever the show, the show went, I still think it is a, a, a real classic. Any last words for the Terminator film? No. You think you're pretty Not much done? No, I'm happy with what we've come out with. Yeah, and I look forward to um, talking to you about Terminator 2 um, in the weeks to come. Um, I think each film, like the Alien franchise, I'd like to do a focus on each specific film because I think they're, ev- they're all strong, even Genesis and uh, Dark Fate, um, I'd like to talk about ev- all of those, so um, thank you yes. for that. Brilliant. Okay, um, I think we should go into Cancelled Yay, it's here to stay next, if that's okay with you. This series technically hasn't been cancelled, but we don't know whether it's coming back, so I think this sort of falls into it, so let's hit that jingle and see what you think. Here we go. Cancelled? Nay. I can hear lots of static. It's here to stay. <laughs> okay, so we're talking about um, an episode, uh, well, a series actually, which just recently had an episode called The Promised Land, um, which I thought was quite good, and that is Red Dwarf. Um, the reason I'm covering this is that basically um, we don't know if it's going to come back, uh, which would be a shame if the series were to uh, if that was it and you know no, the actors a lot of them are saying they don't think they're going to come back they have said that before um, and after third well where were it 87, 97, 97, 97 yeah after 33 years um, the series hasn't finished it hasn't completed its its story of Lister on a minor ship three million years in the future how does it end so if it were to end uh, with like one last special or one last series, um, what would you like to see to wrap things up? <laughs> I'd like to go to a three-part special. Okay. Uh, where Ollie, they come across some device I don't know. They find it, get into some really crazy, weird situations, and uh, what happens is uh, they find something called the quantum slip bollock drive or whatever <laughs> right 
and uh, they plug it into the ship and and obviously they, they, they end up fighting loads of sins and all weird stuff and uh, they meet a xenomorph or whatever, one of them changed polymorphs polymorphs yeah and, and, and they go through all that and uh, and that's it and the cats turn up there after this device because it can enable them to to get you can get somewhere instantaneously like it done yeah and uh, they find it and it, and anyway they set it up crying because it's like most intelligent ones end up setting up this device and uh, just as Red Dwarf's about to get destroyed with all this crazy stuff going on and loads of humour, uh, the press it, Rimmer accidentally activates it and zam, bam, wham, at the end of the ring orbit over uh, three million years in the far future. Right, okay, that sounds good. That sounds really good, actually. Yeah, I mean, something like that. I mean, what, uh, what would you like it to end with? I know with you take it part too. What do they find on Earth? That's, uh, that's what I was going to say. I mean, you could you could end it like on Voyager, where Voyager literally just you see it going towards Earth, and that's the end. You don't know about all the things that happen afterwards with all the respective issues. Uh, or, um, I mean, that's that's the thing. If they got back to Earth, I mean, I would like Lister to sort of um, meet up with. Um, you know, people who run the Red Dwarf, is, um, what's Jupiter Mining Corp, or something like that, and and obviously talking yeah, but to are them. Are they going to exist three million years in the future? Well, yeah. I mean, this is it. I mean, if it's that's another, <laughs> that's another idea. If if it were to finish and they got back to Earth three million years in the future, what would Earth be like? What would civilization be like? How would, well, that, would it have been about? Is the universe godlike? Yeah. Or, or whether they... I mean, this is where you. This is this is the big question. What is on Earth? Yeah, and the thing is, though, you would have thought that if there was a lot of things on Earth which are, would have evolved over three million years, you would have thought because of all the derelicts that they've seen from humanity, that they yeah, would see a more evolved humanity. They never did. I mean, whenever well, they we've did seen... come across ships that were centuries ahead of the Earth. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. We seem centuries ahead, but not millennia ahead. Not, yeah. not, not you know, hundreds of thousands of years ahead. Not even seeing. Because humans would have evolved uh, physically in three million years. Well, yeah, they'd be like energy beings. So like, they'd be like a so symbol. Like, symbol like, they'd be like Organians, wouldn't they? Yeah, or, or the ancients on Stargate. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, never yeah, saw that, but so that makes me also. So it's interesting to. I mean, you've got some ideas about why is it we've only seen maybe ships four or five hundred years ahead. That's as far ahead as we've ever seen. I never, never yeah. really thought about that. I mean, we've seen the cats obviously evolve. <laughs> the cats have evolved into a civilization. Which was mentioned in the very first episode. Yeah, that makes sense. It took yeah, reasoning. exactly. It makes it makes sense that they've uh, evolved into a humanoid form from yeah. cats. But what about humans themselves? So what is on Earth? They they're in orbit over the Earth. That's there. the interesting thing. The moon's there. What's there? That's what. What are they going to go down to? That's what right. What is on that planet? I mean, there could be nothing there. I mean, that could be it. Well, I mean, it makes it look like there isn't much that happened. Maybe the, it, it's to me. I hadn't really thought about it until we started talking about this today, but it suggests to me that humanity didn't uh, go much further than several centuries ahead of where they are in the 23rd century, and maybe they wiped themselves out or they all died of something. I mean, that, 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 that looks likely to me. Otherwise, we would have seen more of it. In those 12 seasons, you would have seen more signs of evolved humanity. There's a theme I do it when they turn up on Earth, there's these insane robots that have gone mad. Right. Guarding someone, and they spend that whole pilot movie, second episode, our special. They're on Earth. It's insane. It's like devastation, and there's like Belgians, people from Belgium running about. I don't know. They kept bringing up Belgians. <laughs> okay. There's like a lot of things to Belgium. Though, right. But just turn it off. Just make. And and they come across like mutated, weird type human types, and but the in the middle of it all, there's this great big tower and it's like a thousand miles out it, it, this tower it's all that's left right of human civilization oh okay and there's a mcdonald's at the bottom of it oh it's going to be a mcdonald's a kfc yeah something like that <laughs> okay i think that's quite and, interesting and, and and they're going and it and and and, and to get they've got to get work out this stupid ridiculous password Oh, to get into this tower, but it's got to be pure human DNA. Oh, okay. Uh, Dave, so Dave's uh, the only so, one who could do it, though, because obviously. Well, yeah. Good. Even though he's useless, he's got this. Death he's the only one that can actually sort of get. In. Yeah, yeah that makes he touches sense. it. He touches it, but he can't use hands. Got to stick his ass on the door or something. <laughs> I was going to say so something. Uh, I think you're going to say something else. Then. 
They've got something called ass print, right? So he sticks his ass up there because it won't recognise him as a human. Big gun comes out, so they destroy you. Because the human race evolved and just cleared off. Okay. And and this big dawn is like a big bright heavenly light in this tower, and everybody's cowering and all this. And it finishes till episode three. So it could be. So you're saying it's like a huge artificial intelligence which is running the planet. I'm not saying yet. I'm not saying yet. Well, oh. Well, Doors open. Okay. Big bright and all that heavenly music, right? Yeah. What happens? What? What? Like this is the final episode, one hour special of three part of Red Dwarf, back on Earth. It's called Back on Earth, Red Dwarf. Back, back on, on Earth. Earth. Yeah, that's a good name. Um, I don't know. Maybe holograms have taken over or something, or maybe it's. Really... No, they've. They, well, well, they. You could have them running planet actually. They could be around. Hard like holograms. But it's an insane societies. And the mechanoids. Well, mechanoids the as well. Speak, yeah, they're. There's holograms that mechanoids are having a war. You've got uh, yeah. all these screwed up things going on. It's just crazy. And uh, but they're all the one thing at the centre of it all. I know all what it is. I know it is. It's Kachansky Tower. I reckon it's Kachansky. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. The, the only remaining human female left. Yeah. It's the universe is in a cryopod. And it's her at the top of the tower. And Dave Lister's destiny is to go up there and shag her. <gasps> To repopulate right, but, the human race. Yeah, but no, but he, there's more to it than that. Go, go. Okay, I'm, I'm really intrigued. This because, is good. Because go when he, when he like they go through, like they have to sit through these stupid tests to get through to prove his worthiness. Yeah. And they, and they get up there because they could like Rimmer could become king of hologram people. Yeah. Crichton falls in love with uh, a, a mechanoid lady. Okay. And uh, Dave Lister's destiny is to go in this building. The cat goes with cat people. They turn up because they want to destroy Earth. Because how they don't, they've got their own thing about cats or whatever. Right. And Dave Lister goes, stands on this like white thing, and he levitates like a thousand miles up into the air inside his tower. And inside there's a there's Kachansky in suspenders, brown and knickers. <sighs> and okay. uh, in uh, in this tube. And Dave Lister's destiny is to give her one, but she won't shag him, right? <laughs> okay. But eventually he does shag her, and there's like explosions everywhere. But when he shags her, she becomes pregnant, but she explodes an entire human race out of her. Oh. Into, uh, and they repopulate the entire planet. Oh. That's it. So how they. Dave Lister starts the human race. So the so... new. The phase two of the human race. He's the final part of the deal. And so, and and they're all um, they're all slobs, and they're all got a Liverpool accent. I like. And they're all well, I yeah, but they're all they're all different. They're all different. No, but she, her family explodes, and just thousands of like humans are just created. Okay. He's the final part because the whole earth it all works out that the whole earth is one big chamber there are all these things that are fighting each other it's all part of a big body system that re- and suddenly it all confirms into a whole new earth at the end it's just earth and there's a few people on it which they've created and that's okay, it well, they've I, I, um, the I, final part of the greatest biggest mystery in the universe so I am going to forward this to Doug Naylor at Round Red Dwarf Writer and to see whether he actually could actually use this in the final episode <laughs> so, um, yeah, okay. I think. No, why not? I mean, um, I mean, the thing is, Red, Red Dwarf is so is, is so sort of out there. I mean, they could do anything. Well, um, they would be out there on this journey to get to that moment. But she's like, she's like a super Kachansky. She's so like, and she wants a super fit man. But unfortunately, it's him. Wouldn't that wouldn't that also make him more like a god because he sort of recreated the human race? Yeah, like. but she don't want to shag him because he's, you know. Yeah, because he's listening. Yeah, listener. Yeah, yeah. But she's shocked before. She, she does it, and, and he's like, I think, best time of his life. And then he... he and he can come out looking like a Superman after his banger. Yeah, and he can sort of like... He and he's comes got out a, like he's got a fag in his mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, okay. He's like a new man. You know, he's confident they've listened now. Yeah. And, and he speaks with wisdom. It's like he's got this, like, knowledge. His eyes are glowing. He speaks. Now, uh, and then basically, they're just out of but it all starts again. That's and it. then you can see that the, the music comes up. It's cold outside. There's no kind of accident. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. they sort of like uh, you see. Yeah. Okay. That sounds like it's certainly an intri- intriguing idea. Um, whether or not we do get a final episode of Red Dwarf, I don't know. Um, but I really do appreciate 
you know, you do throw some really interesting ideas when I put this uh, topic to you. So um, yes. thank you for that. Um, I certainly okay. will be looking at um, Red Dwarf in a whole different light after that particular idea. So um, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's it for today's show. Some great yes, um, discussions yes. again. I really appreciate it. Um, I know you hate these, so I'm going to I'm going to play another one. This is a new one. Um, it's just called Terminator the Musical. Oh. Um, it's more. It's, I've only heard a bit of it. I've not heard the whole thing. But it sounds a bit more like Terminator a rap. Terminator the Musical. It sounds more like a rap than the musical. Where do you find all YouTube, this? YouTube. YouTube. You find anything on YouTube out there? Terminator the Musical. Yeah, we've already. Well, there's Terminator Two the Musical, which is. The, but this is more like a rap. But it says it's called the musical. Um, right. We're going to play this just to uh, because that's what we do. Uh, next week we're going to be going uh, covering the last Starfighter, which I only just saw a couple of weeks yes. ago. Um, yes, I want to bounce that off you, so that's going to be proof of some interesting discussion. Martin, thank you very much. We'll catch you and next too. week on the Solar One Sci Fi Podcast. Thank you very much. Yes, and I'll see you all next week. Live long and prosper. Yes. Oh yeah, this is my shit. All the terminators I can do it like this. Cyborgs will be back in time to kill the future mother of the leader of mankind. Going to terminate Cyrocon. Going to terminate Cyrocon. Oh, give me a close. Give me a close. Oh, then I take your heart and be close. I heard a cyborg tug and shit. Travel back in time to terminate you. Won't stop until you're dead. Getting tricky, happy up in the club. Cyborgs will be back in time to kill the future mother of the leader of mankind. I'll be back, I'll be back, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be back. I've always loved you, Saturn. I've waited my whole life to make sweet as love to you and make sure you survive. The fate of the human race may sit in the relationship of your giant magic. Let's make John come tonight so he can leave the human fight. I'll be back.